So in the note editor, we now have a couple of very powerful brand new features, which again, I'm only just going to scratch the surface of. And one of these is a very useful compositional tool, which I think everybody, whether you are a beginner or you are advanced, is going to get a big kick out of because it extends kind of what we did before with being able to lock scales and lock keys and that kind of thing in version six. Um, and all the, the kind of panels for that uh, were all over here on the left. And they weren't very easy to see and they weren't very easy to find and use. So what, um, what we've done is we've improved that. We've created this new scale panel. So if you click on this button here, it opens up the scale panel. And you get this nice little keyboard representation and uh, the key center and then this blue snap to scale button and then the scale type here. I'll come on to what this is in just a moment. Um, there are some pre-created scales. These, that's these ones here. Um, but you can actually also create your own scales. And the way you do that is by uh, basically clicking on these notes here to clear the board, so to speak. And the only one that stays locked is the one that's on the key center. In this case, we're in C, so the C stays locked. So let's say you want to create a scale that has some exotic kind of, um, kind of almost like a whole tone scale, but not quite a whole tone scale um, kind of, uh, setup. So you've got a flat two here, a uh, major third, a flat five, a flat six, and a major seven. So that's going to sound kind of quite exotic, quite unusual. And let's say this is going to be your scale. And of course you can, um, you can totally create um, something out of this. Um, basically when you've got this, the snap to scale on, if I have the, the paint tool to hand and I hold down the alt button, I can now drag out some uh, notes. Um, oops, that didn't work. Let's do that again. So Alt key, and I can just keep on dragging upwards until I get what I want, and that's not working. That's, oh, I know what I'm doing wrong here. I know what I'm doing wrong. Let's try that one more time here. So let's go on to C here. And we'll just drag out a few here. And I'll let go of the mouse and then I'll let go of the alt key. I was letting go of the alt key too soon. That was what was going on here. So now I've just created some notes that are locked to my scale. And, um, and then I can, uh, just add in like a, a note that goes down on the root here. And so, yeah, that sounds a really weird scale, but let's say this is the scale that you want to use. Um, and you want to store this. Well, you can click on the little paper icon here and you can go store preset and then you can give it a name um, and you can call it whatever you want. It You don't have to give it a fancy Greek or Latin name if you don't want to. You can call it flat two, um, nat, you can call it flat two, flat five, flat six if you want to. And um, that's kind of your reference for your scale, or you can just call it Jeff or Susan or Dorothy, whatever you like to call your scale. And then you just hit okay. And I'm going to cancel this for right now. And I can show you, um, scales that I have already uh, created. I've created this diminished whole tone scale here. And if I just clear out all of this notation here that I did earlier, because those notes will not fit. And then if we go back to our paint tool and if I center myself on that C again, and this time I'll do it properly, I promise. And I'm going to now drag upwards until I have all of my steps. And then I'm going to let go of the mouse and then let go of the alt key. And this is our diminished whole tone scale. Bit of a weird sounding scale. And basically this has a flat two, a flat, um, um, it has basically a flat two, a flat three, a natural three, and then it has uh flat five, flat six and flat seven. Um, it's a nice sounding scale. Um, 
but it sounds very exotic. And so I really like it if I'm writing something that, that has an element of mystery about it. Um, I like to use this scale and then I can just like add in notes according to whatever I want. And it's snapped to this scale, which means I'm never going to enter a note that doesn't fit the scale. So this is a useful thing. And then you can keep this piano view, uh, view in uh, place. And uh, the correct notes are highlighted with the blue tips on the end of the notes. But you don't have to view it this way if you don't want to. You can view the in scale view here. That takes away the piano view. And instead, what you have here is the steps of the scale um, over here. And it tells you if you hover over them, you can see what the actual pitches are. But it also gives you the Roman numerals for what step of the scale, uh, one through seven. Um, eight obviously being the octave. Or you can click on this used view here, and this basically restricts you to just one octave view of the notes uh, that I have used. So if I had used pitches above this or below this, this would expand so you could see all of the pitches that I have actually used regardless of octave. Um, so these are useful if you don't want to have the keyboard as a frame of reference or if you prefer to have the keyboard view as we have always had it in Studio One, you can have that if you prefer. Very, very useful for uh, composing and being locked to a specific scale.